The Nikon 35Ti is one of the most strikingly beautiful film cameras I've ever used. Aesthetically damn near perfect and deserves a place right next to Leica. With the sharp looks and analog dials, it fits right in with a manual watch or a vintage card. But all those design aesthetics don't really help much when you're taking pictures, so how does a 35Ti stack up as an actual camera? The Nikon 35Ti debuted in 1993 and it's well known for its rugged yet premium titanium body. Image quality is very good, and the 35mm f2.8 Nikon lens will not disappoint even modern pixel peepers. It offers a nice balance of sharpness and contrast, especially for a compact film camera, but it's subtle and not over the top. Flare is well controlled, but you do get the occasional glare, and unfortunately there's no elegant solution as far as filters and hoods go for this camera. That's pretty common among compact film cameras, but it's especially disappointing because the 35Ti offers functionality much closer to that of a modern digital camera and could have made great use of accessories like filters. Saying that this camera is semi-automatic is really selling it short. You have P flexible program automatic, which is your simple point and shoot mode, but half pressing the shutter and spinning the control dial lets you fine tune your settings. While maintaining the correct exposure, a photographer could increase the shutter speed while opening up the aperture or decide to close down the aperture while reducing the shutter speed. You also have A mode, which is your aperture priority mode, and T for long exposures. For the self timer and long exposure modes, the camera actually uses the top dial to give you accurate exposure information. The Nikon 35Ti also offers exposure compensation of plus and minus two, as well as manual focus, which can also be accessed with the button press and the spinning of the control dial. There's a lot of little hidden functionality, and if you have the right button combinations, you can even change the metering from a matrix one to a spot meter, which is something that you don't find on pretty much any other 35 millimeter compact film camera. The Nikon 35Ti offers a few different flash modes, as well as over and under exposure warnings in the viewfinder. Parallax corrected frame lines will also appear for the correct focal distance, even when using autofocus, as well as warnings if your subject is too close. The frame lines can also be illuminated red when visibility is low, which is a really nice touch. The Nikon 35Ti was a very advanced camera for its time, but maybe too ahead of its time. Remembering how to access all of these functions isn't exactly easy and intuitive, and can often feel very fiddly. When you hear the list of specs, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a digital camera, but when you realize the critical exposure information is split between the viewfinder and the analog dials, and accessing key functions requires multiple button presses no matter how advanced the technology is, it just kind of starts to fall flat. It's really inconvenient to have to take the camera away from your eye to check focus and aperture on the top plate. Inversely, while on a tripod the dials are excellent, but framing and checking shutter speed in the viewfinder becomes more difficult. Same thing goes for the flash. Interacting with it requires you to continuously press a button on the front of the camera, which is really awkward, especially on a tripod. It's very easy to forget which button on the front of the camera activates the flash and which one deactivates it, which makes you actually stop photographing to look at the front just to check your settings. It all makes me wonder was a photographer actually consulted during the development of this camera? Because a lot of the functionality that any photographer would want is readily available, except it's so hard to access in any practical means which is really a shame because the camera technically is capable of doing a lot. The image quality is great, and I mean the aesthetics, come on. But the execution is terrible. Nikon gives you a matrix metering system with manual focus, an aperture readout on the top plate, a long exposure mode that automatically turns off the flash, and of course a literal clock for your shutter, but makes you physically press the shutter button twice. No remote, no cable release, no filter thread. The software is there to make this an amazing compact landscape camera, but none of the hardware is there to support it. On top of that, the camera is slow. Dialing in settings is slow, checking your exposure is a slow process, and focus is slow for a camera of this class. Even when you manual focus, only after half pressing the shutter will the lens extend to the correct position. It's great that the camera gives you focus information so that you can be accurate, but it doesn't mean anything when that information is in a place that you can't see when the camera is actually to your eye. And I often get two to three out of focus frames per roll, even in simple scenes. I wonder if I'm being too harsh criticizing the Nikon 35Ti in this way, because it does produce nice images. If you just point the camera at something in program mode nine times out of ten, you'll get a nice picture. These little annoyances tend to pop up when you're trying to get creative with this camera. Some people might find this compromise to be great, a point and shoot that takes great photos in program automatic that can be something closer to a modern camera with some time and practice. The Nikon 35Ti certainly fits that description, but I think it falls short in both aspects. To me, an ideal compact camera is accurate and snappy enough that all you have to do is think about your framing and maybe exposure compensation, but the 35Ti misses just often enough that it can be frustrating. And yes, it's possible to get really interesting images with this camera with some time and thought, but it would surely be faster and easier just to get a dedicated SLR or rangefinder if you want to take more complex photos. 
As is often the case, the jack of all trades is a master of none, but in this case the jack is a very handsome camera, and I'm sure many people will enjoy the 35Ti despite the issues that I have with it. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you used the Nikon 35Ti and enjoyed it, or if you're interested in this camera, feel free to leave a comment, I'd love to chat about it, and I'll have more camera reviews out soon. Thanks.